a good farm blow away right out from under your feet. No. Well, it ain't pleasant watching all your work go for nothing. The children's mama was sort of in love with the place and she wouldn't give up. But after we collected the money from the insurance she persisted in carrying, why, we just up and sold out. Must have been hard to leave old friends and neighbors. Oh, those folks weren't as neighbors as a man might expect Jay, you know that ad you had in the Farm Journal? Sounded to me just like something I've always wanted. Except that it'll take nearly all the money we Debbie. have to pick up. We're here to see if it's all you cracked it up to be. <laughs> it's just a carburetor, the float sticking. Carburetor? The float stud. Well, anyway, it isn't a tire. Hiya, Mr. Larkins. You need some help? Well, the uh, motor stopped. Mr. Matthews, this is Davey Barkley, our county agricultural agent. I'm happy to know you, Mr. Matthews. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, the motor cut out all of a sudden. It's the carburetor. Cut out all of a sudden, huh? It doesn't sound much like the carburetor, sir. Do you mind if I take a look at it? No. <laughs> Around these parts when a human being isn't feeling well, why, well, we call Doc Pomeroy. But for anything else, like farms, crops, animals, or machines, or whatever, we hunt for Davy. You know, I don't believe there's anything he can't fix. If he believes it ain't that carburetor, he can't fix that truck. Because I can tell just by the wheeze of it what's wrong. Well, Davey, what'd you find wrong? Nothing. Oh, uh, oh, you mean with the motor? Yeah. Yeah, well, my uh, <laughs> distributor wire jumped loose. <laughs> I figured it was that on the carburetor. Well, I'd uh, check it again if you're planning to go very far. Oh, not too far, I hope. I'm showing Mr. Matthews the Brady place. And if it suits him, we'll have some new neighbors. Say, that's fine. It's a good farm, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, that's what Mr. Larkin tells me. But I'll know better when I see it myself. Well, Davey, thanks for your help. Yeah, thanks, I'd like to come by and see you after you get settled, have a talk with you. Sure, sure, Barkley. Anytime, that is, providing we buy. <laughs> well, we'll try to make you feel welcome. You do, sir. I'll, uh, I'll catch that hood for you. Thanks. Beautiful. 
Eu volto. That it hasn't been lived in for six months. A little fixing and put it in apple pie shape. <laughs> yes, but... Uh -huh. Let's take a look at the lane. Well, we'll start right over there. Come on, come on, I'll give you a ride. Come on! What did I tell you about nosing around? Well, there's your big field. 80 acres. One's over around behind that barn. There's 10 acres of fine timber on top of that hill. And over and back, it's Catfish Creek. I caught some big ones there when I was a boy. What else you got to show me? Well, there's some nice grazing land I'd like to have you see. Then after that, we can take a look at the buildings and the inside of the house. Fine. Oh, uh, whatever furniture you see goes with the place. All it needs to make it a home is people. I feel sorry for houses without people in them. Hey, those kind of thoughts belong to a poet. Oh, but Abigail's our poet. Do you know she can put words together that rhyme the first time? Can't you, honey? It just comes natural to me. That's quite a gift. Papa, can Mr. Larkin show me the kitchen? I guess so. Why, surely, right this way. There's a range goes with it. Good, now you get your stove, Debbie. Needs a bit of polish, of course. Yes. Well, what do you think? Also I think money. it just about fills the bill. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a great believer in the democratic process. A family, Mr. Larkin, is just like a nation. Everybody in it should have his or her say. Now, I wouldn't think of imposing my will on important decisions that affect all of us. What we do is hold a meeting and vote on things. And whatever the majority rules, that's what we do. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. All right, the meeting will come to order. Now, we've seen the farm and the house, and I've told you the terms. Now, I'd like to hear a motion that we buy the place. I make a motion that we buy it. Do I hear a second? I second the motion. No discussions? All those in favor, hold up their right hands. <laughs> Good. Passed by unanimous decision. You've got the papers, Mr. Larkin. Hmm? Uh, the papers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Mr. Larkin and I are going over the details. You kids can start unloading that truck. It's power! Get a ditch and a blast it! It's power! Get a ditch Do you hear? Now what stop is this one? She wants to get Come. named Helen. Get what named Helen? Benedict of the Blessed. It's going to be Helen. Susan. And then what? Benedicta the Blessed. What are you kids talking about? Benedicta, our new cow. But, it's... Papa, you as good as promised I could name her, and I've chosen Helen. It's a beautiful name. It stinks. It does not. It stinks. Yeah, cut it... that out, you kids. Neither one of them names will do because what I bought ain't a cow. You can name that if you want to. Take him the pen, Benny. Be careful, son. He's kind of mean. Debbie, can't you keep these kids out from underfoot? I thought you were buying a cow. You'll get your cow, Debbie, a pair of them. Mr. Claiborne, here's letting you have through with a bargain. What about that tractor, Mr. Matthews? I'll let that go at a good price, too. Terms, if you like. Tractor? But we can't afford a tractor. We spent so much money already. Uh, Mr. Claiborne, I'll talk to you about that later. I'd like to think it over. Accommodate yourself, Mr. Matthews. Only a buy like that don't wait long for takers. Yeah, I know that, Mr. Clayman. Well, I imagine the young ones will be starting school right away, hmm? No, I thought I'd keep them out until next term. We're going to need all the help we can get, you know. I suspect you will at that, seeing the season's so far advanced. 
Crack it to me mighty handy. Sure would. Well, so long. So long, Mr. Clavin. Now, Debbie. About that track. Papa, Susan, Abigail, and Phineas are not staying out of school. You need help, and we can't afford to... I'll manage. We promised Mama they'd get their education. Phineas can help you before and after school, and the girls and I'll divide the chores. We'll hold a meeting and decide. No. They're going to school. You're going to act so bossy about it, I'll leave you right where you are. Take care of her, Caesar. Oh, oh. oh, I was just teasing. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Look, he's a purebred Angus, imported all the way from Scotland. Come on, scratch him, he likes it. What's the matter? You scared? Cost me more than a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? And he's yours? Sure, he's mine. All the cattle in his pasture are. I raised them. You mean they really belong to your father and he let you pretend they're yours? Well, I mean, no such thing. They are mine. Dad gave me two Angus calves for a start. I paid him back a long time ago. Say, you're one of the new kids who just moved around here, aren't you? Yes. What's your name? Susan Matthews. What's yours? Peter Wexford. But everybody calls me Buzz. Why? I don't know. Unless it's because... Because he's got bees in his bonnet. What are you doing here, Jesse? Spying. Brothers are mostly dopey, but interesting. Say, I saw you at school today. Susan, this is my sister, Jesse. Jesse thinks I couldn't find my way home without her. You couldn't. You're dopey. And you're an undersized snoop. Well, I can't stand here wasting my time talking to girls. I gotta get the cattle headed home for their supper. I'm grain feeding him to put weight on. I've got to get home, too. Come on, I'll open the gate for you. And all these cows and Caesar, are they really yours? I told you they were, didn't I? Well, bye, Buzz. Bye, Jesse. Bye. Goodbye, Susan. See you at school tomorrow. Bye. That the girls all fall for him. <laughs> what kind of a song is my little girl singing? Something she just made up? What, Papa? 
That song you were just singing about somebody named David Barclay. Why, I hardly knew that anyone would hear it. But surely you remember David Barclay, Papa. He's a county agent. You know the man that knew more about your truck than you did? <laughs> the one that stared so at Deborah? What about him? Why, nothing, Papa. At least nothing that means anything, I'm sure. Well, if it doesn't mean anything that all the girls fall for Mr. Barkley, why don't you tell us what you know? I'm sure we'd all like to hear. I don't know how Abigail would know it, but I think what she wants to tell you is that I met and talked to Mr. Barkley in Millwood today. Henry Larkins told me when he delivered the groceries. It'd be much nicer, Abigail, if when you wish to tell things on the rest of us, if you'd be more straightforward about it. Oh, I don't want to even think what's going to become of us if... These suspicions and bickerings keep up. Maybe you'd like to tell us what you found so interesting to talk about with a so attractive Mr. Barkley. It was just about the farm. After all, he is the county agricultural agent, and I asked him what crops he thought we ought to raise. And I imagine he was very happy to offer his advice? He did suggest that we plant potatoes. Oh, didn't care for soybeans, huh? Oh, he said the summers here aren't hot enough. I don't suppose Mr. Barkley got his knowledge from work in a farm. He studied in college. Well, after all, 40 years of actual farming is apt to give a man more know-how than he can... He is in touch with all the farmers in the county. And the state university supplies him with the latest information and ideas. I've got all the ideas we need. Now I've got something important to take up. Finney. Yes, Papa? Sit down here. We're going to have a meeting. Yes, Papa. Meeting will come to order. Now, before I get to what I have in mind, is there anybody got anything they want taken up? All right, Susan's got the floor. Speak up. Papa, I, I'd like to borrow enough money to buy two lambs. Like these. I want to raise them for my very own. When they're grown, I can sell the wool and pay you back. And after a while, I'll have a lot of them, like Buzz. Buzz? Buzz Wexford. His papa gave him two calves, and now he's got a whole herd and a prize bull named Caesar worth more than a thousand dollars. And they're all his very own. Only I want to raise lambs. Please, papa, may I? I met Buzz. He's a swell guy. One fellow told me that Buzz made over eight hundred dollars last year just from his cattle. I think that's a good idea, Susan. There's something in this far more serious than the borrowing of money to buy two expensive lambs. And I'm surprised at you, Deborah, and you too, Phineas, that you didn't notice it before you spoke up. Well, Susan, we put your idea to a vote, but I've got to go against it because I think it's purely selfish. I don't suppose you understand that. For if you did, you wouldn't want to go on possessing things all by yourself and shutting the rest of us out. Or is it that you don't want to share because you don't love us like we love you? Well, you heard Susan's plan and the discussions about it. Now we'll put it to a vote. All those against... Shouldn't those in favor vote first? What difference does it make? Those against. Good. I guess that settles that. Now, if there's no other business, I got a plan I'd like to propose. One that'll be good for all of us. You know, we need that tractor, Mr. Claiborne's, in the worst way. Of course, he'd be willing to rent it to me, but you know we believe in owning things outright. Well, wouldn't it be better to rent it? I believe I can make out a way we can buy it. How, Papa? We cut that timber at the top of the hill and sell it for lumber. I've already spoken to Mr. Gale about it at the lumber mill, and he's willing to pay us a good price for it. Then we'll make a down payment in the meantime...
up with a baby? What's wrong? He isn't fair. Pop isn't fair. He got his tractor, but... I didn't want those lambs for my own because I don't love all of you. I wanted them because... Because I... I think I can help you say why. It's because... You want to be an individual. And to prove that you are one, you got to do something all by yourself. To own something that's wholly yours. Is... Is that wrong? I don't think so. But how will I ever be able to do anything like that? Abigail always votes the way Papa does. And if Papa even looks at Finny, Finny gets too scared to vote against him. Well, it's... It's sort of like fighting a pill, honey. You can't win. You dent it in one place and it just fills out in another. All you do is exhaust yourself. I found that out. But who knows what can happen tomorrow. I got work to do. Want to ride with me? <laughs> That's better. Hello. Hello, Mr. Barkley. Hello. How are you, Susan? Hi. I hate to do this. Miss Matthews, with the bar vested in me by the United States government, I must ask you to keep an eye on this young woman. Why, Mr. Barkley, what do you mean? I mean that a certain young farmer named Buzz Wexford found your sister trespassing in his pasture and frightening his prize bull, Caesar. No. So that since that day, neither he nor Caesar have been quite the same. That's a big fib. <laughs> Susan. Here's something I want you to look over. What have you decided about your crops, Miss Matthews? I told Papa, my father, what you said. And he figured he'd rather work a crop with which he's more familiar. Oh. Well, I can understand how he feels. I see you've started your plowing. Yeah, I just hope I can keep the furrows straight. Would you mind a suggestion? No. The furrows would be more effective in holding water and preventing erosion if they were run across the field. The one bad place on your farm is that hill. There's a soil condition up there that should be protected by some drainage ditches. What kind of soil condition? An old fault runs across the top. The water seeping into it might tend to loosen the front of the hill. You mean that the whole face of that cliff could fall onto our farm? Well, it's really... Well, Mr. Larkins never told us about that. I doubt if he knows it. It's an old fault. There's no active danger with the trees and their roots to hold the soil. But Papa's cutting down the trees. Mr. Barkley, would you mind telling my father about this? By all means, I certainly think he should know about it. He's up on the hill now. Barkley? Oh, yeah. What's on your mind, Barkley? Well, it's about these trees, Mr. Matthews. I'd, uh, I'd suggest you leave them standing, sir. <laughs> I expect you county agents have got to make some sort of suggestion in order to hold your jobs. <laughs> well, I... If you don't mind, I'd like to show you something, sir. It's right over here. Look at this, Mr. Matthews. That ground has slipped down and away from the earth we're standing on. Yeah, but that looks to me like it happened an awful long time ago. It did. But there's no telling how deep this fracture goes. Look. Here is the face of your hill. This fault runs across here and has a natural drainage into a dry ravine down below that points directly at your farm. Without these trees, the whole top of this hill could erode away. But by keeping the trees in, putting in some drainage ditches along here to protect the fault, it'll save you money. It might even save your farm. Well, 
Thanks again for your interest, Barkley, but I ain't gonna let a crack in the ground stop me from making several thousand dollars. And now as a man who's got work to do, uh, you'll excuse me. Well, thanks for listening, sir. That's all right. It won't be long now before I'll be able to show you what a real farm looks like. <laughs> I'd like to stop by and see you again. Anytime, I... Debbie, if Mr. Barkley don't mind, I'd like to speak to you. Private. Thank you. Mr. Barkley, Mr. Barkley! Can I... May I walk to your car with you? Well, don't you think it might cause people to talk? There aren't any people. Oh, well, in that case, come along. Has uh, Deborah a steady boyfriend? Deborah? What's so surprising about that? She's a very pretty girl. Deborah? Well, yes, don't you think so? No. You can take my word for it. She is. She is? Mm hmm. She, uh, ever go out with any of the fellows back where you came from? Only Charlie Gidget. Charlie Gidget? What did he look like? Oh, he was tall and kind of skinny. And his teeth stood out like this. <laughs> he didn't have much hair. Sounds kind of unattractive. Did uh, Deborah like him? I don't know. She laughed at everything he said. How many times did she go out with him? Just once. <laughs> Well, Susan, thanks for accompanying me. You can follow this creek bed right down to your house. But I want to ask you something. You did? What? About this, the 4-H club. Oh, yes, the 4-H club. Susan, the theme of the 4-H club is show, not say. Got time to take a little ride with me? Sure. You may be the key to open the door and let the sun shine in. Huh? We can get to my car right up here. Come on, sweetie. That's a funny name for a club. 4-H. Each one of the letters stands for something. The first H stands for head, the second for heart, the third hands, and the fourth health. And the four-leaf clover is for good luck. I think 4-H club members make their own luck. Can people do that? Sure. If they use their heads, hearts, and hands. You see, Susan, the 4-H club was started for kids just like you to help them learn better methods of farming and homemaking. So that when they grow up and have farms and homes of their own, they'd know how to run them successfully. As county agent, it's part of my job to help the club members with their projects. Huh? Uh, each member has a project, a, a piece of work that he plans and carries through all by himself. Oh. It can be almost anything. Oh, raising rabbits, a garden, calf, chickens, fruit trees... Baby lambs? Sure. Or sewing, cooking, canning. There are all kinds of projects. Is Buzz Wexford a 4-H member? Buzz? Oh, he's the star of the Millwood Club. He's already made enough money from his Angus herd to put himself through college. They look fine, Dell. Thanks a lot. Say, these are new hutches. Yeah, I built them myself from those plans you got for me. Oh, it's a nice job. Tell me, how are your books? I can tell you, Mr. Barkley. He hasn't kept them up. Got to keep after that, Dell. Keeping books is as important as any other part of a project. I'll do them tonight, for sure. Good. What do we have here? Canned pears. They're for you to sample. Oh, well, thank you. How's your canning project working out? Mr. Larkins took 50 mixed quarts on consignment. And the Franklin store in Barton has ordered 30 pints of my pickle lily. You better save some of those for Pop or he'll be sore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are beautiful. You know something, Herb? I think she's going to win you some ribbons. That is, if you take good care of her. Gee, Mr. Barkley, I treat her just like a mother. <laughs> Mr. 
Did you get the lime I suggested, Roberta? Yes, and I used the proportions you gave me. Does my garden look good enough to win an award? Well... <laughs> Later, I mean. It probably will if you work like the Dickens. Oh, I don't mind doing that. You see, this is mine. It's something I've done all by myself. The things you create for yourself always give it the most satisfaction. And you've got the makings of a fine garden. Mom and Dad are so glad you talked me into joining 4-H, Mr. Barkley. I... I wasn't very happy before. Well, 4-H is happy you joined. Susan, there's one more place I thought we might stop. Uh, Benny Tilton's project's raising sheep. He's got a couple of fine lambs I promised to look at. No! No, I don't want to see them. I want to go home. Please! Okay, sis. Home it is. Mr. Barkley, my It's fire. not about the furrows. We're having a dance in town Saturday night, and I wondered if you'd like to go with me. I'm afraid that'd be impossible. Why impossible? I don't like to toot my own horn, but most folks around here think of me as a pretty solid citizen. The remark wasn't meant to be personal. My invitation was. It's just that social activities don't interest me. Wait a minute. Not... I'm not speaking now as county agent. This will be a purely personal observation. You're a coward. Your father, who's probably ruined several farms and is setting out to ruin this one, seems bent on ruining his family as well. Don't interrupt me. I just brought Susan back from showing her some of the work being done by the 4-H clubs. She pretended she didn't like the idea. For the same reason that you just turned down my dance invitation. Because you're both afraid of your father. Some excuse for Susan, she's just a little girl. But there's no excuse for your quitting without putting up a fight, except cowardice. Mr. Barkley... If you don't get off this property right away, I'll run you off with this tractor. You haven't got the gumption, Miss Matthews. No, I have to pump up the bellows on the organ. Don't forget. Well, well, the Matthews. Good morning, Mr. Larkin. Miss Matthews? Mr. Matthews. How are you? We thought we'd try out and see what kind of a breach you got. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our church. It's a nice church, Mr. Larkin. Yeah. It looks friendly. Oh, we mean it to be. Our Reverend Benton is less given to preaching at us than talking to us. We like it that way. I'll show you to a seat.
sermon today is inspired by the story of Moses and the promise that God made to him. The story may be found in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. The promise was that if Moses and the Israelites, who were suffering cruelties and slavery at the hands of the Egyptians, would but have faith, God would show Moses how to lead them out of their bondage into a land of milk and honey. It was the promise of a new life, a beautiful green promise. But before it could be fulfilled, there was a sea and a wilderness to be crossed, thirst and, and hunger to be overcome. The fulfillment, you see, had to be earned. Now, I find a parallel between those ancient Israelites and ourselves, all of us. We, too, are in bondage, lashed with the bullock hide whips of ignorance, shackled by the iron chains of the unknown. But the same promise, the beautiful green promise, has been made to us. Only the sea of doubt, the, the barren desert of illiteracy, the hunger of bigotry and the thirst of incompetence stands between us and freedom, between us and the land of promise. Now, we've been given not just one Moses to guide us, but many, our men of science, our doctors, chemists, mineralogists, agronomists, all those patient seekers after fact and truth, the delvers into the mysteries of matter, the searchers of the mind for a better understanding of human behavior. These men are our Moses, turning our feet away from the false and easy trails of superstition and guiding us along the steep and toilsome path of knowledge, the one true and the one and only road to the land of promise where we may claim our heritage. To my mind, the really sinful man or woman is the one who through bigotry and ignorant pride refuses to learn, and calling his ignorance virtue tries by self-made rule and by scorn to keep all others from learning. These are the real sinners. And here is the vilest evil. To feed their ego, to disguise their inadequacies, to hide their quaking fears, they sneer at the new, revile the experimenter and, and deride the pioneer, and then hypocritically defend their actions behind the fog-bound fortress of intolerance. Mr. Matthews. Enjoyed your sermon, Reverend. It was a fine talk. Made sense? Thank you, Mr. Matthews. I'm glad you could accept my invitation to attend our service. I'll see you all again next Sunday, I hope. Oh, we'll be here. We're a church-going family. <laughs> Papa, we must hurry. Come along, Abigail. Young man? Excuse me. Surely. to see after church. I, I forgot. That's the way it is with me. I just don't make any impression on girls. What I wanted to tell you is that my mom, she and Reverend Benton are the leaders of our 4-H club, would like to invite you and your sister and brother to our club's masquerade party. Of course, the party's about five weeks away, but I thought I'd better speak early before you met some better looking guy. Is it a date? I know he's kind of homely, but please say yes, or he'll have to invite some awful looking pill. Besides, Mother said I could serve some of my drop biscuits. Oh, no, not those. I dropped one once and like to broke my foot. He likes to exaggerate. If you let go of one of my biscuits, it'll just float in the air. How about it, Susie? Will you come? They'd be very happy to come to your party, Buzz. And thank your mother for the invitation. Good. There'll be a swell gang there, and I'll make it a personal project to see you have a good time, cutie. You ought to wear those things, Butterfingers.
you got to help me straighten up Papa. <laughs> What you doing with my fishing tackle? Well, I... I thought maybe you'd take me down to the creek. Will you, Finny? Oh, gee, I... Oh, I dares not Susie. I ain't got the wood cut for Deborah to cook supper with. Hop and skin me alive. Oh, please, Finny. We'll only stay a little while. And I'll help carry in the wood. Well... Maybe there'll be some early ones hungry enough to bite. But we gotta start home in time for me to get the wood in. This looks good, Susie. We ought to get some big ones here. Come on. I can get up by myself. Oh, this is swell. Hand me the worms. Here you are, Susie. Phew. I'll do it for you. No. It isn't fair to let others do an unpleasant thing you can do for yourself. Just because it's unpleasant. Hiya, Buzz. You know, you're trespassing on my pool. You're trespassing on our property. Well, gee whiz. You got a fishing license? No. Well, if you won't say anything, I won't. You're fishing in the wrong spot. Right over there under that bank is the grandpappy of all catfish. There is? Come on, I'll show them to you. I like it where I am. She got the colic or something? Come on, show me the catfish. What is it, Buzz? It's Jessie. Pretend you don't notice or you'll embarrass her. She's spying again. See that shadow? There he is. Gee whiz, let's try and catch him. Oh, he's too smart. All he does is just bunt the bait. Jessie! He's almost as smart as Buzz thinks old Caesar is. Caesar is smart. Caesar's smarter than you, anyway. You didn't know I was trailing you. Sure didn't. I thought it was an old stray cow. Did ya? Homer says you're gonna enter C's in the state fair this fall. Are you, Buzz? He is if he wins at the county achievement day. Achievement day? What's that? That's when all the clubs in the county compete. Whosever project wins gets the show at the state fair. Caesar wins that, I'll get to take him to the national show in Chicago. Boy, wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Of course, it ain't all up to Caesar. I gotta learn how to show him. Gotta be able to produce all the records of how much it costs to raise him. What do you eat and all that? Those judges want to know everything. Well, I sure hope you make it, Buzz. I wish Papa would let... Finny, time for us to start home. Anyhow, no one could catch fish with all the jabbering that's going on. Now you did it. Did what? Only a woman would understand. Oh! Oh, shut up. Yes, it's full and I had to fill it. You just wait, Phineas Matthews, until Papa hears about this. He'll probably give you a good whipping. But, Abby, it wasn't Finney's fault. I made him go. Explain that to Papa. You're gonna get it. Listen, Abby, if... if you won't tell Papa, 
I'll give you a new Indian bracelet I just made. Let me see it first. It's upstairs. Come on. The bracelet will be mine for keeps, you know. You give me that, you nasty little snoo. Two healthy girls are gonna make a little noise, but hold it down, huh? Uh, I'll go with you, Papa. There's something I want to show you. What? What a fine pile of wood Vinnie cut for Deborah. Excuse me. Did you do your homework, Vinnie? No. Run him off the place. Physician. What does that mean? Physician. It means doctor. Someone's sick. fell on him. Oh, Papa! Abby, Abby, be careful. He has two bad leg fractures and a nasty cut on his head. I'm afraid he'll be laid up for some time. When I get the splints on, he'll rest easier, but he's going to need a lot of care. you get the best of care, Dr. Palmer. Good. Oh, uh, would you send one of the youngsters down to my car and get my other grip, please? Vinny. Papa. He's resting better since Dr. Pomeroy gave him those pills. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't We're going to behave gonna... ourselves for one thing. But with Papa hurt and not able to work, we'll lose the farm and this house and we'll all be put in this institution. Oh, Abigail, will you please stop that sniveling? I got no intention of letting us lose this farm. I'm going to plant and harvest crops if it kills me. And you kids as well. I don't see how you expect us to do everything. Plowing and planting and feeding the stock and cutting down trees. And we're not going to cut down the trees. But Papa 
wants us to, and I'm afraid that... some of Papa's plans will have to be changed. You mean that almost the very minute that poor Papa is stricken helpless and maybe lying on his deathbed, that you're plotting to change everything he planned and ruin us? Abigail, now listen to me. No, no, I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell Papa everything. I'm glad I never took the lotion to write for Dr. Lumlock's secret lotion. I'd hate to have any friends of mine. Asking about my form divine. What on earth has come over you, Susan? Nothing, nothing at all. Except I'm pretty sure Abigail didn't mean it when she said she'd tell Papa everything. Did you, Abby? No. Of course not. <laughs> I, I was just making a joke. I wouldn't think of telling Papa anything you didn't want him to know, Deborah. Honest. Get me some hot water, Phineas. Of course, the children are in school, but they do help with the chores. So, as far as my father and the house go, I think we can manage. But it's the farm that bothers us. And I just thought that perhaps you could give us some advice on what we could best do. Well, if you could stay for a few minutes, a friend of mine is coming by who knows much more about farming than I do, I'm sure, and I think he'd be glad to help you. But maybe you know him, David Barkley. Oh, yes. I, I'm terribly sorry. I, I just remembered I, I have to go to Millwood before, before Mr. Larkin closes his store. Closes? Why, you have all afternoon. Mr. Larkin's never closes until six in the evening. Truck's brakes must have slipped. I can't let go long enough to set them. Mr. Barkley, I can't... Oh, I owe you my life. I couldn't have held out much longer. I can't tell you how sorry I am. I, I was sure I set the brakes. Forget it, Miss Matthews. But, Mr. Barkley, why didn't this rock hold back the truck? What? Thing like that could ruin a tire. <laughs> Hello, Susan. A uh, uh oh, uh, Reverend, uh, my sister-in-law and her mother wanted me to say goodbye to you. Uh, tell you how much they enjoyed your sermon last Sunday. Oh, thank you. H have they gone home? Left yesterday. Brother Ed wired said if she didn't want him to starve dead, she better get herself home. <laughs> Think it could be jealousy? Oh, quite possibly. Your sister-in-law is a very attractive young lady. Huh? Oh, we Barclays have an eye for pretty women. Well, there's certainly nothing wrong in that. Oh, oh, David. Miss Matthews came by to ask my advice on how best to manage the farm now that her father's laid up, and I told her I thought you were the one really most qualified to help her, and it just occurred to me... I think it would be a good idea if you'd go out to the farm right now, and then you could talk things over right on the spot. An excellent idea, Reverend. Excellent. Uh, would you lead the way, Miss Matthews? Thanks, Jim. Thanks a lot. Deborah? Yes? Debbie, could I... Could I join the 4-H club and have a project raising lambs? I know I was outvoted, but it wasn't really fair. Oh, please say yes, Debbie, please. Please. Well, we might just as well get hung for a lamb as a sheep. Only if your lambs cost too much, you'll have to choose some less expensive project. Oh, I don't know how much purebreds cost, but the minute we stop, I'll ask Mr. Barkley. He'll know. Thank you. 
There's something I'd like to tell you. Yes? Maybe we'd better talk about the farm first. I shouldn't have let Reverend Benton talk you into trying to help me. No, but he didn't. What I mean is that... Standing here, I realize how crazy it was my going to him in the first place. Thinking I could handle things all by myself. It would mean a fight. I'm not the coward you think me, Mr. Barclay. It's just that... Well, fighting when you haven't got a chance to win is... Well, it's foolish. History's been made with that kind of fool. I'm willing to work, but I don't see how I could ever manage. All this land, the children. Oh, it'd be tough, all right. If you had the courage to try, I could help. There are methods and shortcuts that I could show you that would cut the job down to manageable size. That is, if you're not afraid to tackle it. I'm not afraid. It's just that... How could I start? Can you take orders? I think so. Good. The first one is that you call me David. Mr. Barclay, well, now, if you I... can't follow a simple order like that, there's no sense going on. Frankly, David, I'm scared. The best way to overcome that is to get busy. Come on, Deborah. Gee whiz, Abigail. You'd think they'd run out of words after a while. Abigail? Thank you, Abigail. you and that book taught farmer said. You two of you probably prayed that I'd be struck down so she could try out your crazy schemes. You're a Jezebel. That's what you are, a Jezebel. Oh, you don't care if his insane ideas ruin us and, and drive your helpless sisters and brother out into the world homeless and... Papa, be quiet. You slept through the sermon when Reverend Benton was describing the sinner who didn't want to learn and who tried to keep everyone else from learning. He might just as well have been describing you. David called me a coward for not standing up to you, and I got angry. Now I realize he was telling the truth. I've made up my mind not to be afraid any longer. Since you can't run this farm, I must. And I intend to run it David's way. Now, if you need anything, you call me. Thank you. 
coming in here. Oh, Pops, I've got something wonderful to tell you. Shh. You'll have to wait till this finishes. She uses a lot of air. She likes to hear that old organ roar. What is it you want to tell me about? Well, Beth, I... I can join the 4-H. Swell. You'll like it. What are you going to choose for your project? Cook it? No. Sheep. Sheep? Deborah said I could buy two purebred lambs to raise. That is if they don't cost too much. Do they, Buzz? Well, they're kind of expensive, Susie. How, how expensive? Well, real good lambs cost about 30 or 40 dollars a piece. Is that too much? Hey, listen. Maybe you could borrow the money from Mr. Grinstead. Who's he? He owns the bank down at Millwood. Sometimes, if he thinks it's a good risk, he lends money to 4-H club members so they can start new projects. Boss, do you think he'd lend some to me? Well, I can't say for sure. But once you're a 4-H, you can talk to David Barkley and get him to help. Give those members who have the longest distance to travel time to arrive before the meeting again. Mr. and Mrs. Ralston wish me, on their behalf, to thank all the members of the church for their messages of condolence to the passing of Mrs. Ralston. It's time for the first hymn. Please, Buzz, could I? Prayer meeting next Wednesday well. evening will be held as usual at 8 o'clock. All the right. The you better hurry up and start your pumping, though. They're about ready to start. And... Keep that bobber up there, no matter what. cover off the north side of Strawberry Hill, leaving it bare and subject to erosion by rain. Excited? The Committee on Soil Erosion had planned to replant it with oats or barley, but we'd appreciate the county agent's advice. Thank you, Joe. I've had some information from the state director at the university about a new cover grass. The department would like to make some field experiments, so if the committee agrees, I'll serve enough seed to replant the hill. The grass is a rapid grower and has a deep root system. Miss Susan Matthews. Just step up there, please. You've been approved to become a member of the Millwood 4-H Club. Please raise your right hand and repeat the 4-H pledge after me. I do solemnly swear that I, Susan Matthews, will uphold the rules and bylaws of the 4-H Club. I do solemnly swear that I, Susan Matthews, will uphold the rules and bylaws of the 4-H Club. And as a true 4-H member, I pledge my head to clearer thinking. And as a true 4-H member, I pledge my head to clearer thinking. 
My heart to greater loyalty. My heart to greater loyalty. My hands to larger service. My hands to larger service. My health to better living for my club, my community, and my country. My health to better living for my club, my community, and my country. I herewith declare you a member in good standing of the 4-H Club of Millwood. Here's your membership card, your 4-H badge, and a member's card to put on your house. Congratulations and good luck on your project. Congratulations, Susan. Congratulations. 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 Thank you, Mrs. Wexford. Thank you, everyone. I'm going past your house, Susan. Would you like a ride? Mom and me were going to take her, but you better take her, David. She's got something to ask you. Well, good deal. Goodbye. Congratulations. Bye. Good morning, Mr. Grinstead. This is Miss Susan Matthews, the 4-H Club member I spoke to you about. Susan, this is Mr. Grinstead. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Grinstead. Uh, uh, come in. Sit down. You belong to the 4-H. You want to make a project out of raising two purebred uh, Caraca lambs. You have no money, no security, but you want to borrow money from my bank. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Grinstead. How do I know you know anything about raising Caraca lambs? They were a very hardy breed of sheep imported to the United States from Bocahara. Many experiments prove they thrive in this country. Their wool and hides are very valuable and have a ready market. The wool from the grown sheep measures from 8 to 12 inches and weighs from 7 to 9 pounds and is used for rugs, carpets, blankets, and sometimes to make hats. The meat is not considered as good as that of other breeds, but is wholesome and the milk from the ewes is made into fine cheese. The ewes grow to a weight of 125 to 175 pounds. The rams from 150 to 200 pounds. My brother Phineas has promised to help me build a shed and feeding troughs. I'll raise two beautiful lambs, Mr. Granstead. Do you know what interest is? Yes, it's what you pay for the use of money. Hmm. My bank charges 6%. Are you prepared to sign an agreement to pay that for any money you borrow? Yes, Mr. Grinstead. Hmm. What's your full name? Susan Anastasia Matthews. Your address? RFD number 3 Millwood. How much money would you need? Seven... Seventy-five dollars. Sign here. Oh, Mr. Cranstead. Bobby, you're being very silly about things. Oh, oh. 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 
Susie. And I've got their formula because they have no mother. But I'm going to be their mother and bring them up to be the two best lambs in the whole wide world. They got a power saw and everything. Not trimming our nails, miss. Well, who gave you permission to cut down these trees? I bought them from old man Matthews. My father sold them to you? Well, if the old boy's your father, he did. You can't have them. Now, look, miss. These men and this equipment cost me plenty every hour. Now, if your old man wants to change his mind, he's going to have to pay for that. Plus, the profit I have a right to expect. You bring me a check to cover it, I'll call off the men. And... Otherwise, no. You better stay here, Finn. man in the woodlot. What about him? You sold him our trees. I did. We need the money. You're going to give him back every penny of it. Whatever else he demands so I can tell him to get his men off our property. I am not. Then I'll return the tractor to Mr. Claiborne and get back our down payment. I've already sent him his check. The tractor's ours. They just hadn't taken out all the stumps. Papa wanted them to. He planned to put in a vineyard. How bad is it, David? Well, any rain will drain down into the fall. Well, what about digging those ditches you spoke of? That's a big deal. But there are a lot of roots that'll hold for a while. Don't look so serious. I'll work out a plan when I get back from Fulton. You're going away? Only for a week. Think you can bear it? I guess so. If I must. Meanwhile, I'll show you something that Phineas can get started. Now, this erosion here funnels water right into the fault. Even if the fault weren't weakened, it still spills water into the dry creek bed that aims right at your farm. Well, after all my work, I don't want it all flooded out. Well, it won't be. Have Phineas put posts on each side, stretch wire in between. He can anchor it down with rocks. And it'll catch any rubble that comes down this way and gradually fill in. There's another spot over here. Now, Maurice, hold still and mind me. I'm your mother, you know. How do you expect to win a prize this fall if you don't learn to behave? Mother! I'm out here! You're always out with those lambs. Come on in and get your costume fitted or you won't be ready for Buzz's party tonight. I'm coming. Do you think you can behave yourself while I'm gone? Very well, then. See that you do. I'm coming. Here's your hood, Susie. Thanks. I wired those ears up good. They're beautiful. Let's try this, Phineas. Ow. Well, stand still. Gee, you look swell. Deborah made it. I'm Daniel Boone. No. <laughs> hey, you going with us? I'm going out, but not with you. Where? To a dance. To a dance? Well, don't act so surprised. That's not very flattering. 
I'll bet I can guess. David Barkley's back. Oh, you're much too smart. He's coming back late this evening. Oh, gee whiz. Susan, there are times when I could just... <laughs> that Mr. Wexford and I think it's too dangerous for anybody to go home. Oh! He's helping me put up some beds now and you can all spend the night. Oh. Oh. Let me show you how to do that. Oh. 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 Gentlemen, Jiggling Jesse will now attempt to juggle the jiggling candle and the jittery match. Or so she said. Oh. Uh, please. Please. Yeah? We can't stay here. We've got to get home. Oh, but I Susan. never heard Ray like this. If anything should happen to my lambs, I... Oh, they'll be... Please, Finny. Oh, but Deborah told us to wait for her and David. And, well, you heard what Mrs. Wexford said. All right, Finny.
she? All right, just worn out. Where's Deborah? When the barnyard started flooding, she went up on the hill to check some barriers. I'll put Susan to bed and go look for her. breakfast, Susan. No, thank you. I don't feel like eating. My lambs, are they... Behind the stove, Susan. Fat and sassy. meeting daughter. I'll wait outside. You're mixed up in our affairs enough to stay and hear what I've got to say. Sit down. All of you. I guess even an ugly man can look in a mirror year after year and find satisfaction in what he sees. He never sees what's really there, only what he wants to see. A reflection of himself as he likes to imagine he is. But if one day something comes along that makes him look closer, he'd know then and forever after that he was, that he was just an ugly man. Mr. Barclay, I knew deep down inside your advice was, was well intended and good. But I turned it down just like I did everything else that didn't happen to agree with my own peculiar notions. Also, I was, a, I was afraid that you and Debbie I was afraid of losing her and all the work she could do for me. 
I preached the idea of us all working and owning together because I was afraid to compete with others and show up my own lack of ability. I tried to hide all this, even from myself, behind what I was pleased to call a democratic process. That my judgment was bad and my methods unfair, I... I realize now that it's too late. We're in desperate trouble, all on account of my bullheadedness, without much hope of saving ourselves. But if you children could find it in your hearts to forgive me, I know that I could find in that the, the courage to Courage to try and make things up to you. We oh, understand, oh, Papa. And don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, Papa. Okay, Buzz, we'll start in the field behind the barn. Coming with me? Yes, David. You guys coming too? Sure. Well, come on, we gotta help. Get down, dead ratchet! Susie, I'm, I'm beginning to like him. Oh, Papa. 